I just got a crazy high electric bill. I bet you could guess what the topic of conversation was for my wife and I. This bill was about double what our typical bill is. And so it's a little late in the heating season. We're towards the end of winter during the recording of this video, but I thought that the information that I'm about to share with you is important enough to go ahead and get it out. And in this video, we're going to share with you the five top technologies that I see homeowners taking advantage of to lower utility bills, especially in the heating season. Later in this video, I'm going to share with you a product that I installed in my own home made by a company called Boulder. Thank you to Boulder for sponsoring this video. Let's get to it. The number one technology as far as I see homeowners taking advantage of today is a technology that is not new to our industry, but a technology that is new from some of the capabilities that we are seeing today. And of course, I'm talking about heat pump technology. We're seeing all kinds of systems hit the market, some of them being able to operate at 100% capacity, meaning that it can blow hot air at its top capability all the way down at much lower temperatures, well below zero degrees Fahrenheit, which is crazy if you think about where heat pumps came from. Years ago, I remember some of them would start to struggle even if you got below 40 degrees. And we're even hearing of some systems maybe even blowing warm heat all the way down at minus 30 or 40 degrees, still being able to blow warm heat, draw heat from outside air and not use auxiliary heat strips or burn gas heat. Heat pumps have certainly come a long way. There's cold climate technologies and all kinds of things hitting the market. Number two, different types of radiant floor technology. I'm seeing some very cool, complicated systems where people are able to do things before even concrete is poured. I remember a house that we worked in years ago where they were running the loops that hot water will then flow through before they even poured the concrete. But a friend of mine went so far as to adding these water line loops in the flooring of an existing house. He was able to pull the insulation down, run the loop through. There was this heat shield that he was able to put there, making the floor warm in that house. And again, a lot of the technologies we're talking about are going to save money. So this is in contrast to burning gas or electricity. This is supposed to warm the home, much more comfortable for less money. Now, again, radiant heat is nothing new to us, but some of the ways we're seeing folks take advantage of that technology is new. It allows you options of zoning different parts of the house better. It allows you to be able to heat the home without using those higher utility sucking technologies. And as we move to technologies where they're using more higher flammable refrigerants, we can see more and more products coming out on the market where they're going to use this water technology, whether it's through the floor, whether it's hydronic coils in the ductwork or some other form of hot water, because not only are you able to save money from the aspect of utility bills, but you're also, if you're going to heat the water and you can say, use that same hot water to wash clothes or take showers, it's a win-win. Number three, infrared technologies. In fact, I actually installed in my own home a infrared panel recently. It was made by a company called Boulder, and I'll put a link down in the description of this video where you can purchase Boulder products and get a discount, but this infrared panel was really cool. It's a really sleek looking product that Boulder's making. They call it the Boulder Kelvin, and it's this panel that you can mount vertically or horizontally. It comes in different colors, and it was super easy to install. I think it took me less than 10 minutes. I had to mount a few holes in the wall with the screws. I mounted the panel on there, and it's, a again, a sleek looking product. It's not going to take away from the appeal of the room. In fact, I would even argue that it adds to the appeal of the room. It's cosmetically pleasing, maybe even more so than an actual grill or register with ductwork. It was plug and play, they're maintenance free, and I'm able to control it with my smartphone. I can just tap right there, change the temperature, and the panel warms up. You can also access energy saving features like scheduling, seeing bills in real time, detecting open windows, and more. The Kelvin product was recently recommended by Wirecutter and Business Insider as a highly effective heating product. And they're adding all kinds of new stuff. I actually had a conversation with the owner of the brand. Make sure you click that link below. I think you'll be surprised at the money you're able to save whenever it comes time to heat your home again. 
And one last thing I'll mention is Boulder's Klima Control, in addition to controlling the Kelvin heating panel, can also control numerous other smart devices in your home, including ductless HVAC units. Number four is, again, not a technology that is necessarily new, but some of the stuff that's coming out is really new. So cutting edge, stuff hitting the market every day. And of course, we're talking about ductless technology. It used to be, at least in our country, if someone wanted to buy a ductless mini split, they were using it for a bonus room, maybe a room above the garage or maybe the garage itself. It was almost always separate from the conventional heating and air system. It was meant to be a, an extra just for that room that we don't spend a whole lot of time in. And now we're seeing folks use it as their primary source of heating and cooling. We're seeing technologies where they can, yes, still use the outdoor unit that connects to your conventional ductwork and still heat and cool your home that way, but then still add some of the ductless products to that same outdoor unit, that same outdoor unit being able to supply multiple indoor units. And we already touched on heat pumps earlier and the cold climate technologies. Ductless has come a long way as well. We're seeing different types of units such as floor mount, wall mounts, of course, and even ducted models. Mini splits are here to stay and we're seeing more and more options hit the market. You're seeing more and more homeowners consider ductless when maybe they wouldn't have before. And then finally, number five, and this one is going to be somewhat surprising, and that is I'm seeing more and more homeowners go old school. They're looking at technologies that we have used, if not in just the last several decades, but last several centuries. A friend of mine just added a wood-burning stove to his basement knowing that heat rises and he was able to save money on his utility bills by using again an old school technology that a lot of folks have been trying to get away from and so whether it's pellet stoves those old school wood stoves, new takes on older technologies like boilers. We're seeing combi boilers and tankless boilers, all these wall hung type systems today. And we already touched on radiant technology earlier in this video. More and more folks are looking at some of these old school options because they save on utility bills. Things are not getting any cheaper, including utility bills. Folks are looking at more options more than ever before. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Have you tried any of these options that I've talked about? Or have you been looking at ways of lowering your utility bills other ways? I just hung out with a friend of mine a few weeks ago who was just simply lowering their thermostat and being miserable just to save a buck. I don't think you need to do that. I think you can look at some of these options we covered. If nothing else, get one of those bolder wall panels and be comfortable in your bedroom if nowhere else when you're sleeping at night. All that said, if you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about some of the warranty issues that homeowners are having to deal with. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button for more HVAC tips. We'll see you next time.